so Splinter reported that he saw Randall trying to hit him with a fuel tanker. Ah yes, the engine number 188. I remember him. Yes. Who doesn't? Well, Richard, I can promise you that I will find him. Excuse me? Well, it's obvious that you're gonna send someone out to find this troublemaker. And that someone should probably be me. Well, why you? Remember when Sailor John escaped from prison and he recruited me to look for Travis? Yeah, he chose me because I'm really good at finding things. So I can pretty much assure you that I will find Randall. Okay, I'll have to make arrangements for someone else to do your jobs. Oh, I can handle both. Okay, and Span can roll away. On the other side of the island, Thomas was giving Adam and Brian a tour of the island. And over here is the shunting yard, said Thomas. At the shunting yard, there were trucks everywhere including Harry and Wallace. Hey Harry, why are you looking so blue? <laughs> I'll bet he and Wallace miss their friend Wally. Yeah, well, he's probably gone by now. Probably been scrapped or something. So yeah, too bad, so sad. <laughs> Don't worry, Harry. I'm sure Wally will soon be back in the yard with us. Safe and sound, without a single scratch. I sure hope so. Just then, Thomas, Adam, and Brian puffed into the yard. Harry and Wallace were the first ones to spot them. Just act casual, whispered Harry to Wallace. What was that, Harry? I couldn't quite hear you. So these are the trucks, said Adam. Uh, yeah, said Thomas. Tell me, Brian, what exactly do you see here? Uh-huh. Yeah. And without any warning, Adam rushed toward and bumped Wallace and Harry. Hey, what are you doing? asked Thomas. Bobbing trucks. What does it look like I'm doing? said Adam. Come on, Brian. You give it a go. Well, I can see that you're bumping trucks, but you don't need to bump those two. Oh yeah, why shouldn't we? asked Adam. Well, because those two trucks over there are Harry and Wallace. They're nice trucks. You shouldn't bump them, but you can bump all these other trucks as much as you like. Adam sighed. Thomas, do you want to know why Brian is so silent? Uh... Maybe. Well, said Adam, it all happened 20 years ago. Brian was sent to collect a goods train. Look sharp. Oh, oh, oh. Alright, come along, come along. Mustn't be late, mustn't be late. We're going, we're going. It wasn't long before Brian came to a hill. I better get a good run at it. He said, Hold back, hold back. Oh, too late, we're already at the top. Thought you could pull a fast one on me, huh? On, on, on! Whoa, no, 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 no. Stop, stop, stop. Driver, brakes, brakes. Your sandbox keeps on working, Brian. They're empty. Oh, no. Please do not keep your wheels, axles, and side rods on the rails at all times, and do not remain seated until the ride comes to complete stop. Thank you, and do not enjoy your ride. Stop it! Up ahead of the crossing, the gates were turning so that a locking truck could go across. But the signalman didn't expect Brian to arrive so quickly. Brian shut his eyes as he ran at the final turn. The mess that followed was terrible. The 
driver and the passenger of the locking truck were taken to the hospital. But the next day, it was reported that they did not survive. Oh dear, that's terrible. So I'm guessing Brian was traumatized and that's why he can't speak now? Yes, that's right. He's never going to talk again. That's all because of those blasted trucks. Well, trucks are known to cause accidents. There's nothing we can really do to stop them. And well... Thomas, I don't think you're getting it. The trucks that put Brian in that accident were me, Wallace, and Wally. No, no, you're just joking, right? He's not joking, Thomas. Those two were two of the trucks that Brian was pulling that day. I remember it like it was yesterday, and so does Brian. But you two couldn't have caused the accident along with Wally. You're nice trucks. You said you never caused trouble before in your lives, and you don't like causing trouble. Well, that was a lie. We did cause trouble 20 years ago. But after the accident and after those people in the locking truck died, we, we felt so terrible that we swore that we would never cause trouble again. I can't believe this, said Thomas. All this time, we all thought you two and Wally were fresh out the factory trucks that never wanted anything to do with causing trouble. But it turns out, you're just like all these other trucks. You're troublesome, through and through. Alright, we've seen enough of the yard. Let's continue the tour, shall we? Boy, someone sure has anger issues. Elsewhere, Ryan and Splinter were working when they met at a junction. Heard about your accident, said Ryan. Sorry it happened. Oh, it could have been worse, said Splinter. I could have been hit by a fuel tanker. But something happened that made me stop before it hit me. Do you know what exactly happened? Well, this might sound crazy, but I saw a ghost. A ghost? Uh, do you remember what it looked like? It looked like that Diesel, what was his name, um, Travis. Oh, that's interesting, said Ryan. Well, we should stop talking. We need to get back to work. Hey Patriot, where are you off to? asked Bankan. Oh, I'm just taking these trucks back to the shunting yard, said Patriot. I just made a delivery to Brenham Docks. It's going all the way to Virginia. Oh, Virginia? Okay. Is something wrong, Spankan? Spankan sighed. I once had an acquaintance who was from Virginia. His name was Samuel, or Sam for short. He came from Virginia and worked there for some time before coming to work on the other railway. This was before the diesels completely took over. Because Sam was an American engine, he was much too large for the British loading gauge so he had to be heavily modified to run on our rails. Back in those days, me and the other diesels took great pride in making fun of him. Hey, would you look at that? It's big wheels. 
Uh, why do we call him Big Wheels? We call him Big Wheels because he's so big, the slightest turn of his wheels will cause an earthquake. Oh, we don't want that to happen here in the quarry, now don't we? Have you no respect for the land of the free and the home of the brave? By golly, one of these days, you diesels will regret being mean to me. Oh! Hey now, watch where you're going, will ya? Keep your funnel off our quarry. That was enough for Sam. One day, he asked some troublesome trucks to put one of the diesels in an accident. The trucks agreed, but little did Sam know that I was listening in on the conversation. After the trucks caused an accident, I reported Sam to the manager, and I suggested that Sam would be sent for scrap. The manager agreed. So, Sam was sent for scrap then? Well, I'm not really sure to be honest. You see, some of the equipment at the smelter's yard broke down and so we had to wait for some new equipment. But while we were waiting for the new equipment, we decided we would just build a new smelter's yard on a new location. So we built the smelter's yard and then we moved a bunch of the scrap metal to the new location, including Sam. But I didn't know what ended up happening to him after that because I never went to work at that new smelter's yard. So I don't know if he was scrapped or not. Nobody really told me about it. And starting from when I joined the steam engine site, I began regretting everything I've done to Sam, from being mean to him to sending him to the scrap yard. I would like to go back to the other railway and see if he's still there. But well, I don't really have the courage. Before Thomas or Patrick could respond, Ryan rushed in. Thomas, said Ryan, I, I need to tell you something. It's very important. You know that I bombed the sheds on the other railway a couple of days ago. Well, the diesels are going to be motivated to take over the island again because of it. And if they do take over the island again, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what anyone else is going to do. I've never been in a situation like this. And that's why I came to you, Thomas. You've dealt with this before. You told me. You should know what to do. Thomas sighed. Well, Ryan, I didn't tell you this, but when the Diesels last tried to take over Sodor, I wasn't any help because I was captured by the Diesels. But I do know what we will do in case something like this happens. If the Diesels try to take over Sodor again, we'll be ready. We'll gather up an army and we'll try to fend them off before they can cause any trouble. Yeah, said Patriot, there's a whole army of military engines in London that can help us if the Diesels try to take over again.